So there's a lot of war propaganda happening on both sides, or let's put it all sides. Putin and Russia are pushing their propaganda, and uh, let's look at the propaganda that we're pushing in the United States, right? So that's what I like to do. So this is from CNN. So let's listen to this. U.S. said this week that Russia has the capacity for a chemical weapon attack in Ukraine. The Polish president said today that would be a game changer. NATO would have to think seriously about what to do. Would the U.S. intervene more directly militarily if Russia uses chemical weapons in Ukraine? Well, first, Anna, it is a very legitimate concern, fear that Russia would use chemical weapons in Ukraine. They're right now accusing the United States and the Ukrainians of potentially using chemical or biological weapons, which is a tell. It's a tell that they themselves may be preparing to do so and then trying to pin the blame on someone else. That's a classic page out of the Russian playbook. Okay. Uh, Again, they're the only ones who ever do anything like that. They would never launch a false flag. Uh, In fact, award-winning journalist Aaron Maté has also done some great work on the Syria uh, dirty war. And uh, would you like to uh, make maybe a comparison to what this guy just said to what the United States did or what has happened in Syria? Biden administration is recycling their exact same playbook in Syria. In 2013, you had people inside the Obama administration wanting to put out the option of more direct military intervention in Syria on top of what they already were doing, which was funneling weapons to sectarian death squads who destroyed the country. And so Obama laid down that red line. And as one former U.S. ambassador to the Middle East told Charles Glass of Harper's Magazine in 2019, the red, the red line was an open invitation to a false flag operation, meaning that if you wanted to trigger U.S. military intervention, all you have to do is carry out a chemical attack or stage a chemical attack and use that to campaign for increased military intervention. And that's what happened. The U.S. had no evidence at all that the Syrian government was using chemical weapons or preparing chemical weapons attacks. It did, though, have a lot of intelligence pointing to sectarian death squads, including al-Qaeda, having an advanced sarin production cell. We learned that later on from the reporting of Seymour Hersh. And when a a chemical attack did happen in Ghouta in August 2013, the U.S. uh, claimed publicly that they believed that Syria did it when all of their intelligence showed that it was, in fact, sectarian death squads. And that's why even some concerned Obama administration officials undermining their colleagues leaked information uh, at the time. This is August 2013. And they said that the intelligence was not a slam dunk. And that was a carefully chosen term to reference the Iraq WMD hoax, because we all remember George Tenet's infamous slam dunk. So the U.S. is now accusing Russia of accusing the U.S. of plotting false flags is in fact doing what the U.S has done forever, accusing others of uh, chemical attacks while knowing that the evidence is not there for it, and knowing that it's in fact the U.S. backside, the sectarian death squad rebels in Syria that are guilty of it. And now comes this same allegation here in Ukraine that the U.S. is making against Russia. And note when it comes, it comes only days after Victoria Nuland had that really awkward congressional appearance that you've covered, where she was asked flat out to deny whether or not Ukraine possesses biological or chemical weapons. And she didn't. She didn't deny it. She instead made a sort of vague statement about Ukraine having biological facilities and her being concerned that Russia might get them. And as you pointed out in your show, if those facilities are benign, then why is Victoria Nuland so concerned about them? Now, of course, that doesn't mean that Ukraine actually has biological weapons. We don't know. But the point is to make that admission and then follow it up with these allegations that Russia is, in fact, planning false flags, it it just raises suspicions. And given the U.S. track record in Syria, um, there's certainly plenty of reason to be skeptical of what they're saying. And that applies to Russia as well. When Russia has accused the U.S. and Ukrainian side of plotting chemical weapons attacks, we should, of course, wait for evidence for that, too. There's no reason to believe them any more than we uh, believe the U.S. So all sides need, need to show evidence. And the point overall is that by fueling this dangerous situation, We're getting to a point now where the world's top two nuclear powers are accusing the other of plotting false flags with chemical weapons. And that's just a very dangerous moment. It speaks to the insanity of U.S. policy of using Ukraine as cannon fodder instead of pushing for diplomacy and and reaching the, the only solution that everyone knows is the way out of this conflict, which is keeping Ukraine neutral and not as a NATO proxy 
for the U.S. to use to try to bleed Russia with. So I will ask the same question I asked about Syria. What would be in it for Assad to use chemical weapons when he's just he's winning the war anyway? And that would be the one thing that would trigger the United States involvement in the war. There was nothing in it for Assad. It was counterintuitive that he would do that. It wasn't rational. It was unbelievably irrational. And it made no sense. So it would. Does that apply here too? Because is does Russia really need to use some kind of ex, extraordinary means to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish in Ukraine militarily? No, the only utility here is the same motive in Syria for the U.S. and its allies to leave the option to pr create a, a pretext for potential increased military intervention to do the same thing here. So for NATO states and the U.S. to say if chemical weapons are used, as the CNN host said, that could be a game changer and that could change our calculus. So the only incentive here is for people who want to leave open the option of increased military intervention in Ukraine, and that's the U.S. and their NATO allies. And that's why they're making the allegation for Russia to do the one thing that it knows, just like Syria did, could invite uh, U.S. military intervention. Of course, it would be suicidal. And um, these but, uh, but these are, allegations have, have no evidence. But yeah. there are real again, let's remember the Maidan coup and what happened there was the extreme right the Nazis and people brought in from now we're hearing reports from Georgia to sniper to kill those people and to blame it on the government and so uh, I would not push put if you can think it those Nazis are willing to do it and so if there is what um, if there is some kind of chemical attack or anything that's going to happen related to Ukraine, uh, it's going to be reported one way and only one way. And so just keep in mind that you cannot trust the news reports about any, especially something like that, because it took how many years? I mean, Aaron's been meticulously and we were debunking um the syrian gas attacks at this and still if you go to wikipedia it still calls me a conspiracy theorist cnn calls me a conspiracy theorist uh for debunking the bullshit narrative about the syrian gas attacks being committed by assad now assad is a horrible dictator brutal just like all the rest of them uh but they didn't do the gas attacks and uh it, that's been proven and through your reporting through the whistleblowers um so just when you hear of a chemical attack, uh, there's a very good chance that that is being manipulated, that is, that is uh, uh, being done by the, the very people you think we're trying to help. There's a good chance those Nazis uh, might do that as a false flag, just like the Al-Qaeda or, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the terrorists in, in Syria did that. Uh, so w anything to add to that? Well, yeah, Jimmy, look, to just to underscore your point, if you want to know why you cannot trust what Western officials and their media stenographers say about chemical attacks, look at how they treated the OPCW scandal. This is a massive cover up that we've extensively covered uh, where you have the OPCW, the world's top chemical weapons watchdog, their own veteran scientists write a report about an alleged chemical attack in Duma in April 2018 that was blamed on the Syrian government. That report found no evidence of a chemical attack, but it was doctored and censored and kept from the public. And instead, as we know now from leaks, a trove of leaked documents, the OPCW basically uh, manipulated their own findings, left out inconvenient information, and reached a false conclusion to suggest that Syria was in fact guilty. And try to find a mainstream media outlet that has, forget reported on these leaks, even acknowledge their existence. You just can't find it. Some outlets out there still have never even acknowledged the existence of the OPCW whistleblowers. And not just big corporate outlets, also supposed adversarial outlets like The Intercept have never even acknowledged the w existence of these OPCW whistleblowers. So that speaks to the massive iron curtain that's been erected around this OPCW scandal because this narrative that Syria committed chemical weapons attacks is so useful to US hegemony to the point where they're now recycling it in Ukraine. And when they do, they, they'll often invoke Russia's record of uh, being an ally of the Syrian government as, as supposed evidence of its ability to carry out chemical weapons attacks inside Ukraine, when in fact it's evidence of the exact opposite, because it was not Russia and Syria that were responsible for chemical weapons attacks. It was the people that the U.S. was arming and backing, which is sectarian death squads, 
And that's why even a scandal such as the OPCW cover-up cannot be acknowledged in U.S. media. And here's the brilliant reporting that CNN did on those gas attacks. I don't, if you remember, watch this. <laughs> I mean, there's definitely something that stings. That's how that's how the kids. Mind. So it's, there's definitely. So if you thought there was a chemical weapon on a backpack, the first thing you do is start sniffing it. That was the first thing you do. So that's 100 percent propaganda that CNN did. And uh, they're pro war and they'll they'll lie. They lie all the time for war. So and there's a perfect example of it. And they don't even tell you who this woman is. This woman is also connected to uh, uh, the former president of, of Syria. So and they send her over there to report and son of a gun. She confirms everything the West wants her to say. Isn't that something? There really was a chemical attack. And how do you know? Well, you know, there was a chemical attack because she sniffed. It. I mean, there's definitely there's something. definitely something, definitely something that stings. Definitely. Mm, smells like a false flag. That's what that smells like. OK, um, so just keep in mind when you see there's a chemical attack, just remember this and remember that our government lies all the time. Um, WMDs, does anybody need to hear about WMDs? Does anybody need to hear about that? OK, you know, uh, Barack Obama and Joe Biden, who's president now, dropped more bombs than Dick Cheney and George Bush. Just keep that in mind. So these people are all maniacs.